In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. God invites us to a lavish banquet, but asks us to prepare for it by turning from our sinful ways. Let us examine how well we are preparing for God's banquet. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines juicy, rich food, and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The re reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken on that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we have looked. Let us rejoice 
and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accordance with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroying those murderers and burning their city. Then he said to the servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whoever you find. The servants went out to the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet his guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. And the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Way back in seminary days, 50 or so years ago, I learned a song by the medical missionary sisters that said, I cannot come to the banquet, don't bother me now. I have married a wife, I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me excused, I cannot come. I'm busy. I got other things that are more important. In these days of the coronavirus, we have an excuse for not coming to church. But we still, through the power of uh, the internet can attend. But do we? And I recognize that I'm preaching to the choir, but it's something important for us to recognize and reflect on. We have lots of excuses, and we'll go lots of other places rather than to Mass on Sunday. And we will fill Sunday with lots of other activities rather than keeping it a holy day as we're asked to do in the law. Whatever excuse we have, it begs some questions. This parable that Jesus tells, and most parables demand of the hearers some 
reflection and an answer. What are we running from? Why is it that Mass is not important and other things are? Why do we absent ourselves from the Lord's table? What are we afraid of? In the mid-1700s, a sailor named John Newton found himself running away. He went from ship to ship to ship, assignment to assignment on the high seas, until he found himself working on a slave ship. He was transporting human beings that had been uprooted from wherever to become slaves someplace else. He sunk into the depths and he felt as though he were being pursued. What was he running from, he asked. And when he finally stopped, he realized that he was be being pursued by grace. And that's not a girl's name in this instance. It is a gift. The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. And in that grace, he found life and love and forgiveness and mercy and were familiar with what he did after he got off that ship. He began study and was ordained, became a hymn writer, and he writes Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see that grace pursues us. That's what that parable is about, part of it. What will happen if we allow ourselves to be caught by God's grace? How will we be changed? Our priorities, our outlooks. Well, I think we'll be changed substantially. Grace is not something we have much experience with in our society, actually. Because grace has got pushed away, downplayed. We're not justified by grace in our society, but rather by what we do and by what we contribute, what we make ourselves into. So how, we wonder, can we be justified by grace in God's sight? Surely we've got to do something so that God would give us grace, would love us. Frederick Buchner, in his theological word book, Wishful Thinking, writes, Grace is something you can never get, but only be given. I'm going to say it again. Grace is something you can never get, but only be given. There's no way to earn it or deserve it or bring it about any more than you can deserve the taste of strawberries and cream or earn good looks or bring about your own birth. People are saved by grace. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do.
to do. And there's nothing you have to do. The banquet of our Lord, the bread and wine of the Eucharist is a meal of grace. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. You didn't cause that, mean it, make it. You didn't exist when that happened. And long before that, you were loved and graced. Grace transforms us, it molds us, it links us to the community, and it compels us to action and responsibility. It opens our eyes to our selfishness and moves us to reach out in love. Is it any wonder then that the guests who were invited to this great banquet uh, said, oh, uh, no thanks. They didn't want to have to do something. And the excuses that they make uh, aren't worth <laughs> the breath. That we ourselves are proficient in finding reasons to avoid this profound experience usually say that we don't want to be transformed. Because we don't think that we're worthy. And, and none of us are. There's not a person here worthy of the gift that's given us. We didn't earn it. There's nothing we have to do to get it, except be open when it's given. It's the nature of our sinful humanity to cling to our selfishness and to work at our self-justification. Yet God never ceases to pursue us. The banquet is never put off. Grace is offered to us. Come on and eat. Oh, yeah, maybe later. I've got other things to do, we might say. And there's the gift, still there. The prom the, this meal promises nothing less than the experience of God's saving grace and presence. The parable of the great banquet that we hear in the gospel this morning certainly is a parable of grace. Grace will be showered upon all humanity and will reach out and bring in the lost. Even those that we think aren't worthy. What are you doing here? We might be surprised when we get to the gate of heaven and see others that we didn't think did anything or were worthy or whatever. One, that one little twist that Matthew records should be noted. Grace calls for a response and responsibility. Once we've experienced and received God's grace, now we are accountable. We're accountable for God's grace comes at a high price. And right there it is before us. The crucifixion of the Son of God. The ultimate gift that someone should give us. And we're invited. And so, my brothers and sisters, come to the banquet. Come, sit by his side. His table is waiting. His friends have arrived. The food is abundant, and all has been blessed by our Master and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ.
invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has blessed us richly with all good things. With grateful hearts, we place our petitions before this loving God as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all clergy, that they would spread the truth and mercy of the Gospels to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued health and recovery of our president, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater reverence to human life, that everyone would recognize the image of God in each person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Jeff Steinbach, for whom this Mass is offered on the 21st anniversary of death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Donald Snook and Lawrence Ketter, that they enjoy eternal life with Christ, risen from the dead and reigning gloriously in heaven, and for the poor souls in purgatory, and for those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of bounty, you invite all peoples to a feast beyond compare. Give us and all your children the grace to one day share in the heavenly table with all who have gone before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, and by whose, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Topeka Traveling Rosary Novena will be at Most Pure Heart of Mary, 7 p.m. by the Grotto. The intention will be for an end to the corona virus and healing for our community. The Knights of Columbus will be at the exits today, uh, giving out Tootsie Rolls for their annual fundraiser. Uh, thank you for your support to them. Also, the Knights will have a breakfast burrito sale to support seminarians. Please see one of the Knights at the entrances if you'd like to, uh, an order form for those. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.